One of the things I love about Elite Dangerous, we're not the big damn heroes. None of us are in the AAA rockstar ranks to riches to saving the universe storyline. We're not on some Joe Campbell-inspired hero's journey acting as a lone wolf who can magic everything for the better in a galaxy that's going straight to hell. We are the tiny cogs that keep the galaxy working. The truckers and the couriers bouncing between the stations. The ground pounders putting down a riot. The unknown pilots shredded in the meat grinder of anti-Xeno combat. Elite Dangerous is not a Hollywood epic. It's British through and through, and that means we're the big parts in a gritty Mike Lee Flash Gordon kitchen sink drama. Nobody in the universe knows who we are, and isn't that wonderful? Where some games will take you from a nobody arriving in a city to the crime lord ruling everything, to taking yourself from a tiny home to the outworlds of the fields of stars, Elite's never done that. Nearly 40 years on from the first, here's a Cobra, here's 100 credits, away you go. We still start out with a few credits, a basic ship, and nothing but the black to welcome us. No matter how long we play, we all remain tiny cogs in galactic politics, with all the intrigue and court appointments far above our heads. Rather than be guided by the all-powerful narrative, we can do whatever we want. We'll never be noticed, even if you are one of the elites in a field of elites fighting the Thargoid Titans. Nobody knows your name. And that makes me wary of the upcoming power play changes from our friends in FDEV. Maybe the worry is displaced. The progress of the Thargoid Titans, the pushback against the galactic invasion that the player base has achieved, the tools in the organisation that allow hordes of crates, anacondas, pythons, twos, and the occasional asp scout to rain shards on the invasion, is power play. It's a background simulation. Systems are attacked, forces are driven back, territories are decided. Yet, there is a difference between the active and tangible goals that Thargoid combat zones, station rescues and pod extractions offer than do a mission, hand it in, imagine a tick being added to an influence bar that we see in the power play in BGS elsewhere. Here lies the challenge. Power play 2 needs to offer the interactivity and challenge that taking on the Thargoids continues to offer. Power play 2 needs to be able to unify a significant number of commanders under a common cause. Power play 2 needs to allow third party tools access to the relevant data to motivate those chasing the common cause. And there needs to be new game mechanics, combat mechanics, training mechanics closer to the wings of anti-Xeno than the pings in the background. It's clear from Galnet that a sweeping story is building, which is great. But when have the small cogs ever realised what is happening far above them? Why does a trucker need to understand galactic politics to move some tritium? Why does a courier need to know what's happening in a science lab on the other side of the bubble? Why does a soldier need to know there's a new general telling him what to do? We've never been the big damn heroes. We shouldn't have to start now.